Guitar practice session 102424. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on and then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me verbalize the things I'm trying to learn to get them in my mind better, possibly providing information to others, learning similar things, possibly for providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the types of things that I'm doing here. I do think that presenting the information is useful to get something in your mind because it forces us to verbalize things in ways we otherwise would not. So if you want to use any of these resources and make your own practice sessions, don't worry about plagiarism or anything like that. I'll provide you with the worksheet, hopefully, and you can adjust it or do whatever you want to do with it. However, the orientation currently of the worksheet is from the perspective of us playing the guitar as though we took that guitar in our hands, implanted the strings on the screen so that we have top to bottom, left to right, in the same orientation as from us per perceiving the guitar from behind it. And I'm going to also flip my guitar around so it looks like I'm left-handed so that you can see the strings on my guitar going the same right way as on the worksheet as to your guitar behind from the perspective of behind it. Hopefully making it easy for us to orientate so we can spend our time focusing in on the fingering of different positions on the fretboard. So this time I'm going to be looking at the seventh related to the mixolydian. Now note we've gone beyond kind of the, the basic points of thinking about the major scale and the intervals of the major scales now looking at those uh, positions which are going to have different intervals and I really think that is a useful thing to do but oftentimes we view it from different perspectives so we talk about this this is what I kind of start off talking about uh, to give a recap of what we're going to be doing and then I go into the interval so just to give a quick summary of that we're gonna, I'm going to go from this worksheet here, which is going to give me all of the mixolydians uh, without the sharps and flats, so I can pick a, a, a note on each string. And then I'm going to go back to here to the, to the related modes. This one's giving us the, the C major scale and related modes, and I basically go over my overarching objective, which in summary is to be able to play... Uh, in the in the major key, be able to know the notes by relative position, which we're looking at in the key of C, but which would be applicable to any key when we think about the relative positions. I'm then going to use an absolute numbering system to number the modes so that basically I have an idea of how to build the chords from the modes. If you don't want to think in terms of modes, however, you can think in terms of just saying, these are the relative positions, one through seven. I, the major chord constructions would be the one, four, five, which would be kind of like your bluesy chords in the major. And then the two, three, and six would be the minor chords. And then uh, the seven. Now, I would like to be able to construct that in such a way that if I went to the Dorian or the Phrygian or the Lydian, that I can still have the same notes here, but they're going to be in a different order given the fact that I'm playing a different scale, which is basically simply a different mode, but has the same related mode, in this case, to the C major. So that's great. But how can I then know whether I build a major or minor chord? That's when I get into basically kind of like uh, using the, the major scale as our Rosetta Stone and some simple math equation kind of to be able to convert from one to the other. Now, you could just think of these modes as, as numbers related to the major key to know if you play major or minor or even to think about your intervals. But I would use that like fifth, like the fifth mode is what we're looking at now to say that's going to be what my numbering system will be to describe the modes. So the, the fifth mode, I'm going to say, is going to be the Mixolydian mode. When I say fifth mode, I mean the fifth mode compared to our Rosetta Stone, the, the key marking point, the major scale. And, and then I can build from there my Mixolydian scale, which, if you're playing in the key of C, is basically the thing that you're going to use in order to build your, your chord constructions. In other words, we take the 1, 3, 5, which will still be, in this case, a major chord. But when I add the 7, 
I need to know that the fifth has that distinctive seven, the dominant seventh. Why does it have that? Because we're building it out of, in essence, the mixolydian. It's not like we're playing, it's not like we're bouncing from like a C major to a G major and making it the one. In that case, you would still have a major seven. But what we're really doing is playing the related fifth that's in the same key, which means we're basically playing the Mixolydian mode, which has the same relative positions for the one, three, five, but has a minor seven in it. So that's going to be the key. And then, and then once we have that down, I'm going to practice that minor seven, which is different than the major seven. So we went over the intervals in prior days. I talked about the intervals for the major scale. And now I'm looking, and I looked at the 7, 9, 11, and 13. Now I'm going to pick the ones out here which are different and try to pinpoint when they are different so I know when I can play the, the different interval. The two intervals that are different are the 7, which is on the 5th, otherwise known as the Mixolydian mode. So when I build a chord off of that, I have a different 7th. That's what we're working on now. The other difference is the 11th. That's with the Lydian mode, otherwise known as the fourth, uh, uh, if you're thinking in terms of, because the 11, and so we'll talk about that more tomorrow. The seventh by far, I believe, is the most important distinction in the majors, meaning all of the other major chords that we make, the four and the five, the Lydian and the Mixolydian, will have all of the same intervals, except the Mixolydian will have a different seventh, the fifth will have a different seventh, and the fourth will have a different 11th. The seven is going to be most likely the most important because that gives you that dominant seven uh, position. So I want so we, I want to know what the normal seven is, the major seven, and then look at the distincting, distinguishing mode or chord that you're going to create, and that's here. So then we move to the, to the Mixolydian where I can practice looking at any position on the fretboard and then think about what that interval is in terms of this is the minor seven hopefully i've been saying minors it's the diminished seven that we're going to be looking at we'll systematically do that by choosing like a note in the middle of the of the guitar and then looking at the relative position on each string of the minor seven in relation to it now i also kind of talk about the idea that the that the the mixolydian is one way that you can see like the major blues scale which I think the blue the the blues is is supposed a lot of people think it's like well that's an easy thing to play like the blues or something like that but really when you kind of think about what's going on it's not because it it's like pulls in all these different kind of exceptions to the rule which which you can observe different ways so there's a lot of easy heuristics that you can use to play like the blues but but the fact that there's so many different ways that you can visualize it gets a little bit uh, confusing and it used to kind of drive me crazy so uh, i go into that a little bit in terms of how you might visualize things but the mixolydian is one way that you can visualize it if you're playing a major blues you can kind of envision yourself as though you're going from the one of a mixolydian in one key to the one of the mixolydian in the next one to the one of the mixolydian in 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 the next one instead of saying in like the same key but you can also think of it different ways so and then at the end, I kind of jam a little bit in uh, a uh, in the a uh, major blues or a mixolydian blues. How, again, however you want to, <laughs> however you want to see it. I try to do that. That's not my main. Uh, I like doing that, but it, but it's, but I, I tend to like the minor blues more just because that's what I learned uh, first. But I'm trying to get the major blues in there, which has that kind of reachy shuffle pattern in it, which is cool but stretchy. All right, that's basically it. Oh, I tell a joke in there too. It's a political joke because we're in political season. So um, if you don't want to see, if you don't want to hear that, you can fast forward uh, on that one. Continuing on with the Mixolydian mode, focusing in on the seventh of the Mixolydian mode. I want to give a quick recap in my own mind and be able to verbalize what my overall project kind of is at this point in time to get a better understanding of why this might be useful or helpful, something you might want to spend your time on, something that I currently am spending uh, my time on. I do think that the seventh is one of the most important intervals to learn when thinking about chord constructions above and beyond the three intervals that make a triad chord. 
that being the 135. And I do think it's useful to think of it in terms of a modal relationship, although that kind of frightens a lot of people. So let me give a quick recap as to what that actually means and why it might be useful. Uh, so if I go back to the related modes, what I'd like to do is be able to use the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode, as our point of reference, as our Rosetta Stone, and then compare all the other modes to it, even though all the other modes are kind of fractally related, kind of like a fractal picture. Uh, you can derive any of them, them from any of the other ones, but it's traditional in Western music to use the major scale as our point of reference. So that's what we'll do here. So what do we want to do then? I would like to know the relative positions of the major scale, the first through the seventh, that will tell me what notes I'm going to be in, seven notes out of 12. And then I want to use that relative position to then tell me how I can build chords from each note in the scale. Now, usually what we do is we memorize the, the relative positions on which builds a major or minor chord, saying that the one, three, one, four, five, one, four, five will have a major chord construction. The two, three, and six will have a minor chord construction. The seven's got that diminished chord, which has a minor third and a flat five uh, to it. So that's great. However, that gets a little bit tricky when I move to like different modes. Like if I went to the, to the Dorian mode or the Phrygian mode, then if I'm in the related mode, I have the same notes, but they're organized differently. So, so the problem is that when I, when I look at the relative positions one through seven, I, I don't know if I'm gonna play a major key or a minor key on it because now they're in a different order. Therefore, I would like to be able to convert them to the major scale uh, so that I know at least the relative positions. And then I can see if I'm playing the one, four, five, it'll be a major chord, the two, three, and six, a minor chord, and the seven being the diminished. So the way we've been doing that when I walk through the scales is to say, well, look, if I'm on the third of the Phrygian, I apply a little math here. Now I know the math kind of, people have commented on it and said, well, you're turning music into math, you accountant, <laughs> you stupid accountant. This isn't what we're, I, and I get that. I totally get that. But uh, I think it's really practical uh, to to do that because to, to some degree, because it kind of, I can't, orientates yourself to some degree. So if I was to say, like if I was to play the third of the Phrygian mode, which is, rela which is related to the, to the related major mode of the Ionian or major scale, I could do that by saying, okay, if I, if, if I use absolute modal numbers and, I, and I'm saying now the, the, I'm in the Phrygian mode, I know the Phrygian mode is the third of the Ionian. And that means it's, if I'm on the Ionian, it would take two steps to get to the Phrygian, right? So if I'm on the Phrygian, I, I could say I'm on the third step of the major key, which is my Rosetta stone. And then if I'm looking at, at like the third of the Phrygian, I take three minus two to get to the two steps plus three, and that gives me five. That will tell me I'm on the Mixolydian mode. So, so that's useful because now if I see that five, I could see it as the Mixolydian mode or I could just see it as it's the fifth related to the major scale. And I know the one, four, five of the majors I would build a major chord from. Therefore, on the Phrygian, when I'm on the third, I can build a major chord out of the third of the Phrygian, right? That's why it's kind of practical. Now that obviously takes some thinking. It would be best if I could just memorize all of the relative positions to all of the modes, but that's more memorization, right? I can also think about it in terms of where, where do the shapes live on the fretboard that we talked about on, so there's multiple ways that we can kind of go about this, but that's uh, one way uh, to, to do it. Now, if I'm, so the other thing that I would like to, so that means what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name the modes from, with an absolute numbering system that is based on the major scale, meaning one through seven of the major scale. I'm gonna name the modes one through seven based on the major scale. And then when I look at the relative positions, I can kind of do that little bit of math. Okay, that's great. But that really only tells me about the one, three, five in terms of chord constructions because it tells me if I have a major or a minor. So it really only tells me about the different interval between, which is the third. 
The third on the major chords has a four note away major third. On the minor chords, it has a three note away minor third. The one and the five relative positions, the intervals are the same. It's the third that will be different. Okay, that's great. But then when I go out to the seven, nine, 11, and 13, right now we're focused on the seven, it's not that way. I can't just say that I'm gonna play a major or minor modal chord, right? A major or minor chord and know whether I play a major seven or a minor seven. That's the problem. Now, so, so I have to break it down deeper and say, okay, well, if I'm on the major chords, the one, four, five, then I could say the seven, what would be the seven on the one? That's the one I would compare it to because that would be in you know, the Ionian mode. That's my major scale. And it would be a major seven. So we have a major seven away if we're on the Ionian, which we looked at before. But now I wanna look at the ones that will be different. And the ones that are gonna be different, if I look at the four, it's gonna be the same. It's the five that's gonna be different. And this is where I think a lot of people get mixed up. I used to think that when I play the major chords, like the one, four, five, that I'm actually switching from a C major one to, to an F major to a G major if I was in the key of C. But that's not really what happens if you wanna stay in the same mode. You're just basically, you could think of it that way, but you're really just going from the Ionian mode to the Lydian mode to the Mixolydian mode, meaning, when I build the 135, these notes are still in the same key. I'm just starting from a different position that happens to result in the same formula, a 135 compared to this root note instead of to this root note. So that's great that that works. But then when I go to the seven, that's it's not always going to be the same as as up here. Right. So that's going to be that's going to be the problem. So how can I kind of memorize this well I, I could say once i memorize all the of the major items i could go down here and say okay which of the modes have a different modal structure which where, where's the difference on the four and the five if i go to the four which is the lydian mode then it's the fourth that's going to be the difference and the fourth is equivalent to the 11 i believe right and so and so there's that and then and then it's the fifth What's the different interval on the fifth compared to the Ionian mode or the major scale? It's the seven. It has a minor seven in it. So, so the fifth, then, if I think of the chord constructions, I want to be able to know that the fifth has a minor seven, which is different than the fifth if it was uh, on the one, which would be a major seven. And I think it would be more useful to be able to say that that fifth represents the Mixolydian mode. So when I say... I, I'm looking at the fifth as it relates to the major key, then I can name that modally as it's the fifth is the number I'm assigning to the Mixolydian mode, which has all the same notes as the related major, in this case C major, but they are in a different order uh, in terms of the Mixolydian mode, which just so happens if I skip every other note to build a chord from the root, which in this case is a G, results in a major chord construction and a minor seven as opposed to a major seven that minor seven is really important because it's a leading tone to get back home so it's the classic leading tone that gives you kind of like a bluesy flavor to some degree except that you only play it on the fifth unless you're in like a major blues in which you convert everything to having a minor seven on it right but it's the dominant seven so whatever you want to get that leading tone going back home, that's the note that you typically want to be adding, even in the minor keys, right? In the, it, like you might, the, the, that's the tone that kind of leads you back home uh, oftentimes, or, well, I won't get into that. But that's, so that's, that's the idea here. Okay, so then, so then what I want to do is think about this, this uh, here, which is this uh, um, scale which is the Mixolydian scale. Now, again, you could think of it just as the fifth. So you could think about it when I play the fifth, what are gonna be the different, what's the different intervals from the, the, the one, the, the relative major. But what you're doing when you do that is you're basically simply comparing a mode. The fifth is the Mixolydian mode. What's the different interval on the Mixolydian mode? Well, we can just remap out all of the information here and, and 
and, and look at it from the Mixolydian mode, and that's what we're doing now. So if I go over to, to, the, to my Mixolydian mode tab, now I have, I have a bunch of, of worksheets that are mapped out that have all of the Mixolydian modes going from Mixolydian to Mixolydian and so on and so forth without, uh, with no sharps and flats, just looking at the non-sharps and flats because my objective is to choose a note, any note on the fretboard, I would like to be able to say, if that's my root, where's the related minor seven? And if I can find the related minor seven, then I can, I can start to build my chord from that, which usually we would think of a chord as a one, three, five. I'm looking at major chords right now, although the minor seven could obviously be in many of the minor uh, chords as well, right? But we're gonna say it's the one, three, five uh, for the major and then add the seven if I can. Now, if I can't get the one, three, five and the seven and I want the seven, I'm gonna drop the five first. And then if I can't drop the five and pull the seven, I'll drop the three and pull the seven. And sometimes with the seven, you might even drop the root and still think of it as, a, in this case, an A major with a seven in it, or you know, a dominant seven or whatever you want, a minor seven. But you can then, and then grab these and it'll give you that, that feel. So just those are just the things to kind of uh, keep in mind as we go through here. Also, I think it's useful just to note that we're playing in mix. When you think about if you're playing in the key of Mixolydian, rather than playing the fifth of the relative major, like the, you're saying, I want to play within Mixolydian, you're basically playing kind of like the blues uh, in the bluesy scale. Remembering that many people might not think of it that way. Like when you talk that the problem with the major blues in particular is that many people will define it actually differently. Some people will just say, well, you're playing the blues. If you play the one, four, five, I don't care if it's major or minor, I'm going to call that the blues. It's like, okay, that makes sense. But then other people will say, well, no, when you say blues, it's really a major blues that you're playing, except you play all dominant seven uh, chords or, you know, with the minor seven in it. It's like, okay, that makes sense. Other people will basically say, well, you're playing in, in like a Mixolydian mode and you're kind of jumping from the one of one Mixolydian to the one of another. So these are things that used to confuse me with the, when I'm trying to figure out what, what is going on from a structural standpoint. So I could, so I could kind of do something with it. Right. So, 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 so in other words, like some people will say, if you're playing in the blues and a major blues, you can take this minor pattern, which you can, I'm not saying it's wrong. And you could, and you can like, change it and you can shift up the notes that you need to to make it to make it basically a, a major with a with a flat seven which is kind of neat because you end up doing different like slides and patterns that you wouldn't normally do and you you end up with a uh, you end up with the same what i would call position one here and here right? because this is where the position one would kind of belong if i'm in an a I would think this would be where position one would be if I was in an A major. Ending here, but then we also play it here. And just try to slide up on the notes or bend the notes that don't fit. So that's an interesting way to think of it. And, and, and that'll be interesting for improvising and, and bending stuff. That's kind of like a classical way of thinking of it and probably why this position one is so useful right but then but then you could think of it as like you're in the major but you want the flat seven which what i would call position two where you're like okay i'm gonna be like but instead of having here i'm gonna keep on throwing in this flat seven all right, so you can think of it that way because then you're still thinking of it yourself in the major. But if you do that and you basically eliminate the major seven and you pull in, uh, you eliminate the major and you pull in the minor seven, you're basically playing the Mixolydian scale. So you could just think of it as you're playing in like the Mixolydian mode, right? Which, which in, 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 the, in the Mixolydian mode, it's kind of interesting because you could think of it as position five if I was in the key of A, which I would name this position which would be like the same thing I just played, but. So, or you can do the three note per string position, which I think you wanna kind of visualize both of these to some degree at the same time, because I can reach out here 
and this gives you that shuffle pattern. This is what I call the three pillars. So that's where I get this one. And I'm reaching out from the power chord here, here, and then grabbing this uh, six. And then you could reach out then to the seven, which is what we're doing here. But to do that, notice I'm, I'm shifting my fingers to not have these two fingers, but these two fingers because that'll allow me to reach further. And I'm also holding my guitar more in a classical style with my thumb behind as much as I can, because that allows me to, to reach higher on the fretboard. And this pattern is interesting because you have not just, you have three of them. So, and that, so, so I have, Instead of just two, like you would if it was a major, like if you thought about it as the major, you'd have this pattern, but then but then you wouldn't have the third one. If I think of myself in Mixolydian, I have the three pillars, which is kind of cool because then you can put those together as two hamburgers and do the hammer ons So there's a lot you can do just with that kind of symmetrical three pillar pattern uh, which is useful and notice that obviously any a that we're on if i go to this a down here i've got the same three pillars except it shifts up right there right because of the kink in the tuning so if i went to this a same shape so i could do the same shuffle pattern right here but then it shifts up because of the kink in the tuning to that last bit, right? And then if I had an, an A, you know, the other, I have an A here, which is in the open A. So now I have the open A, uh, which would be the same pattern. So that's... So that's just something to keep in mind as we go through this. But now we're down here. I think we left off last time down uh, on the last bits of the strings. So I want to look at each string, pick a root note, and then try to find all of the related sevens, which isn't too hard, minor sevens, because there's only one per string, because there's only going to be one note that is the minor seven interval within a 12 fret uh, space. So that's what we're doing. And I'm going to be down. So I want to go like, I think I was on the C. I don't know if I did the C. I don't think I'd let's go down here and do a C and think of ourselves uh, right here. Okay. So then I'm going to say there I am. All right. So now we're going to say, all right, let's go above it and say, where's my minor seven if I went above it. So if I'm going above it, then I have to take the inverse of the distance. So a seven is a 10 note away, minor seven, 12 minus 10 is two. Here he goes with his math again, dang accountant, math head. All right, all right, let's not, <laughs> it's, gonna, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be two. And then we're gonna say that uh, if, the, if it's two, then I'm gonna say going from here to here is negative five, I would call it, and then four, three, two. So this distance, from uh, here to here, wait a sec, uh, from here, is that right, to this, what am I on here, yeah, wait a second, yeah, there we go, yeah, that's right, I keep on thinking I'm in the key of C, so it's from here to here, pinky to pointer, that makes sense, and I'm, I am in the key, all right, anyway, pinky to pointer, <laughs> there it is, okay, and then uh, if I go inverse C up, then that's, I'm not in the key of C, I'm in well, C mixolydian. Okay, I got it. And then if I go up, it's a 10 note away, uh, minor seven. Okay, so what do I have? What, what else could I grab with that one? Well, I have a third up here, so I could play that. 
So now I have the three, five, or seven, minor seven, and one. So that's kind of useful. I don't do that much. And that's a useful one to note. And then I have I have a five down here. There's no way I could grab that at the same time. So because of the kink in the tuning. Now hold on. Uh, here we go. So I can go. This is the G right there. And then I've got, why is this difficult to finger for me? I have this here. Okay, okay, wait a second. All right, I think I got it now. So now we've got the seven, one, and five. That's interesting. Okay, I also have a three right underneath here because of the kink in the tuning. So now the three is underneath instead of back here. So I've got this, this, and then this one, which is probably better to play if I bar this. So I could bar this and grab, keep on grabbing the wrong note over there. Wait, A, there it is. So now I'm grabbing an A below it, which is a 13, because it's gonna be hard not to bar that off. I could try to do it like this. And then mute this last one. But it's easier to bar it. I might still be able to lift up my knuckle a little bit to not play that. All right, that might be useful. Okay. Uh, so we have that. We've got that going for us, which is nice. I also have a G down here. So I have the C, G, but there, I'm not going to be grabbing that A. Maybe. stretchy on that one all right let's move on move it on up to the next one we're gonna say so if I go to this one I want a two note distance again 5 10 negative 5 negative 10 11 12 that brings me back to 0 I'm gonna say 12 minus 12 is 0 and then 1 2 so that's a two note distance away so that makes sense so I'm gonna say from here to uh, the, this one. Is that right? Yeah, I guess that is right. So that's a two note away major second from bottom to top is a, a 10 note away major or minor seven. All right, is there anything else I can grab? There's no way I'm going to get to that fifth while I'm reaching up there. There's a third right there. You would think that's doable, but not really. That's too much of a reach, man. I'm just going to leave it as is. Let's go up here. Uh, this this one. This is going to be. This is going to be uh, five, and then ten, fifteen, and then fifteen minus twelve would give me. Uh, 5 minus 2 which is 3 uh, and then this would bring me down to 2 so that makes sense okay so then I'm gonna say this C and right here two note away bottom to top to bottom two note away major second bottom to top is therefore a 10 note away minor 7 Okay, so what can I do with that? Well, I have a third, like right there. 
So that's useful. It's interesting, I don't normally do that. I'm muting this, I can mute the strings that are open pretty easily. But I also have a fifth, which is above it. So I could try to bar this off and then grab that. So now I could go set minor seven, three, five, one, three. That's interesting. I don't normally do that. Okay, I think that works though. I'll have to play with that. What if I went here? And I was like, here's that, here's the third. And then the seven. Interesting, very difficult of a reach. Cool sound though. All right. Uh, what about, what about ism? That's a what about ism. All right, you're playing what about isms. Oh, crap. Uh, all right, let's move on. Moving on, uh, if we may. My footstool almost fell over. I think I rolled my ankle. How did you, how did you roll your ankle? I was playing the guitar and my footstool fell over. So here's the one. <laughs> A cheap footstool of textbooks. I've, so if this is the, uh, what what am I doing here? No, that's not the way. That's not the way. I'm going back here. Okay. <clears throat> This to this would be a two note away, uh, a two note away major second, therefore from C back to A sharp, 10 note away, minor seven. All right, what can I do with that? Well, above it, I have a fifth. So I have a fifth above it. So I could arpeggiate and say one, five, seven, one, five, minor seven, one, five, I could have a three below it and arpeggiate that way. So then I could be like, the three is right below it. One, three, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven, one, three, minor seven. Cool. What else do I got? Let's kind of leave it there because it's on the same string. Let's go to the next one, which is more interesting. This is what I was trying to do before. But it's, see, now we've got this one, which is usually the reachy one, but now it's out of reach almost because of the kink in the tuning, because we've now crossed the fault line. So because of the plate tectonics of the guitar, this whole land mass moved up to the right. And now I, it's, all, it's like the Galapagos Islands out there, which I can't even get to anymore unless I really reach. And that's why they got those weird things over there, like the alley, like the, like the dragon lizard. But like, so if I tried to do my shuffle pattern, like I normally would be doing, like up top, if it was here, I'd do my shuffle pattern this way. try to do it down here my f fifth would be up here and then 
the major six would be out here. So I can't really do that. You can kind of like toy with it. Like I have to do this. That's not really reachable. It's like the Galapagos. The Komodo dragons are out of reach. Uh, but maybe I can reach something else uh, while I'm going out there. There's nothing down here I can really. Yeah, that's not happening. It's pretty. I'm going to leave it. There's nothing else I'm going to get while I'm trying to reach out. Trying to get. If you're trying to get yourself a Galapagos Island turtle you're not going to be having time to pick up anything else let's do let's go down here this one is going to be because of the because of the kink in the tuning five and then ten is down here so normally ten is like right underneath but it's over here so now we have a minor seven like this so and then the inverse two note away major second so that's cool so that's pretty because now I've got a third right above it so I can just do that get that sound get that tensiony sound and then I've got a fifth above that should be doing that more and then what else do I got what do I got there's a fifth over here so I could go boom 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 could arpeggiate between this and the third. That's cool. So there it is with the fifth, and then I drop it to the third with my bar. Let's just stop that. Let's go to the next one down. Uh, so I did all that. All right, so now I'm gonna go to this string. Before I do, let's do a joke. It's got some politics in this one. It's political season, so it's gonna possibly annoy people. So if that's gonna annoy you, then go ahead and fast forward here. I'm trying to do a, a Greg-filled, gut-filled rant, but I don't got the style for it. So it's kind of like, a mix between an epilogue and like a joke. So here we go, I'm gonna get some coffee. All right. You know, the mainstream of sewage media thinks we're so stupid. It's crazy. Telling us all kinds of lies, man. And it's like, hey, hey, you think, you think I don't see what you're, what's happening here? You think I don't have eyeballs? Well, actually, I, I do have eyeballs. Well, actually, th they're less like perfect eyeballs and more like distorted eye ovals, which does make my vision much, much worse. But still, but still, my eyes are, are kind of like the, the spinning of the planets situation back in the past, you know, where they used to think of the planets that spun in perfect circles. But in reality, they're spinning on distorted ellipses. Similarly, uh, ra rather than having eyeballs 
it seems it seems that I have more of like distorted eye ellipses, but still, e even with my imperfect eye ovals, even with my imperfect eye ovals, I can still see what what you're doing here, mainstream of sewage. I could still see what's happening, even if even if my eyes weren't working at all, I could smell it. I don't even I I have six senses. I can I could still see what's happening without like my main one, even if that was if that happened. Honestly, like if if even if even can see what you're doing with if I can even see what's going on with my distorted eye ovals, then you can bet. That that not you're not hiding anything from people that have actual circular eyeballs, okay? I mean, if I could see it with eye ovals, like the eyeballed people out there are totally like onto you. Your only hope is that they remove their eyeballs completely, so as to no longer be burdened by what has been, and further burdened by the same empty platitude that is currently being and being and being again like a sledgehammer of cringe delivered in, in different different disingenuous accents for crying out loud I, I love it when she delivered it with a jamaican sounding accent you know that one cracked me up because you know i i'm not i don't know for sure i'm not, i'm just saying but i i got a strong feeling that's not real man that accent it didn't come off genuine to me it, 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 I'm not sure that one's gonna fly. I mean, honestly, like I feel like I could pull a better Jamaican, you know, thing than than that. I mean, you know, I mean, at least I went through a reggae music phase for crying out loud. I have, I be jamming to some Bob Marley wailing with the Wailers for crying out loud. Seriously though, you know, like as a as a white American European basic like mutt blood European, not even knowing exactly where my heritage you know, even comes from at this point and not really caring, being more interested in good ideas, being willing to adopt them no matter where they come from, as long as they're good and work over the long run. Uh, you know, I could, I couldn't just all of a sudden, I couldn't just, uh, I couldn't just all of a sudden start talking like an, like an Irish hardfoot from the rings of power shire for crying out loud. What? Who are you telling? Who are you to be telling me? I cannot talk. I cannot talk like this. It's a little jarring to be sure, but it's it's what I felt like doing this morning. Today I've decided I'm William Wallace. So like, you're not William Wallace. He's seven feet tall. I, I've heard, and if he were here, he'd consume the English with fireballs from his eyes and bolts of lightning from his arse. I am William Wallace. Why? Because I've just changed my social media pronouns to Wallace Self on my socials, dang it. Now who, who are you to be denying my Wallace Selfness, you bigot? Freedom! Sorry, I just went from an Irish, from an Irish Harfoot to a Scottish William Wallace there for a second. But whatever, what's the difference? They're all the same, right? I mean, it doesn't even matter. I mean, honestly, like, the raw, the raw sewage in the eyeballs is painful at this point. It's not healthy. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm currently installing one of those eye washing, like drinking fountain looking things that we used to have in shop class to wash out your eyeballs in case you got like lacquer in it or like acid in your eyeballs, you know, just, just, just in case some, some, someone turns on the mainstream of sewage for too long at one point in time and my eye ovals uh, over exposed exposure even get more, even become more ovalish than they currently are because of the toxicity of the sewage. That's why I need the washing machine thing. Honestly, like we'd be, we'd be better off locked into like the TikTok communist Chinese spy app than the current like cable look unplug unplug the cable TV people find yourself another find yourself a credible source for crying out loud you're living in the past these people are crazy there's other there's other areas to get information I'm gonna okay that's my rant uh I could have done it better I don't know. It is what it is. All right, let's do the next one.
I'm going down to the E now. We're going down to the next string. Let's take a look at this F down here and do the same process. So now remember that the fault line is down here. So we have uh, the continents have moved up on the guitar from the bottom. They've shifted up over time. That's my, that's just for memorization purposes. That's not really what happened. They just made the guitar like that because it makes the fingering easier for some chords. But that's what I'm going to say in my story, in my mind, because it's easier to remember that. All right. So then I'm going to say that this, so now I have my seven up here. I'm looking up top. I'm looking at a distance of the inverse. So it's a 10 note away, minor seven, 12 minus 10 is two. So if I count up, then I go from the kink in the tuning says five is out here, four, three, two. So there's two. This is it. So if I go from top to bottom, this would be a two note away major second from bottom to top would be a 10 note away uh, minor seven. Okay. So that's great. And then I, what can I do with that? Well, I have a third back here. So that looks promising. So boom, boom, boom. That's cool. Totally doable. I haven't been doing that much. And then I also have a third up here so I could say uh, here's my F and then could I reach out to that A it's kind of a reach is that right yeah And then I have a fifth back here, but that's not going to help me if I'm grabbing. I have a fifth up here, which is totally doable. So now I've got here. So I could go between those two by saying boom, boom, boom. To this. Whoa. No, that's not right. Uh, what was I doing? I was going here. Dude. Dude, you lost it. All right. Focus. All right, here we go. What else we got? Let's move this up to this one. Next string up is out here. So a two note distance would be, this would be negative five, negative 10, nine, eight, seven, six. What? Let me do that again. It would be, I went the wrong way. Five, 10, 13, 14, let's try this again. It would be five from here and then 10, 11, 12, which brings me back to zero because that will bring, and then it goes one, two. So it's a two note away distance. All right, I get it. Okay, so then if I say, if I went from this F back to that one, that's really far distance so I see it out there but it's really difficult to play I'm not going to do that one so I'm just going to recognize that and move on let's go to the one up here so if I do that two note distance is what I'm looking for this would be five or negative five ten fifteen bringing it back down fifteen minus twelve is five minus two which is three and then this way would bring me to two so then this should be a two note so if I went from here to here from top to bottom two note away major second from bottom to top therefore it's a ten note away minor seven all right ten note away minor seven okay 
And then, so then what else do I have here? Well, I've got a, a fifth back here. Boom, boom. Boom. Interesting. And then I have, so I have do do do, and then I've got a third underneath. So I could grab that third. Really? Wait a second. The third would be back here. So I could grab these two like that. <laughs> I can grab, I could bar this. Uh, like that. So now I could bar this, grab that seven. in the G, which is a nine. So I'm throwing a nine in there. I don't have to grab that. I can do, I can not grab that and just mute it. But I'm trying to get the, the A at the bottom was the point of this process, of this. I'm trying to get that A. That's why the bar is there. could pick this one up all right that's interesting I might have to play with that more all right uh, where was I uh, uh, do we're gonna go I have a third here did I do it that way. So if I'm on, I have this F and a third here. Now that's pretty easy to play. Is there any one way I can get that fifth? Which would be here. And the third. Oh, you're getting greedy. It's not really easy to do. But I, okay, let's stop there. My mind is uh, fading. So let's just go up to the next one. Uh, this is way out here. That's not doable. But the distance would be 5, negative 5, 10, 15. Let's bring it down. 15 minus 12. 5 minus 2 is 3. And then plus another 5 would be 8. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Makes perfect sense. So from here to here. That's not very practical, but I see you out there. I see you. All right, so then let's do let's do this one down here. So if I'm on this F and I go backwards, then we're going to say this is a, from here to here is a two note away, major second. Therefore, from here to here is a ten note away, uh, minor seven. And so now I've got the arpeggio uh, below it. I drop my pick. I drop my pick. I can't pick anymore. I need you pick. If I can't, if I can't pick, I'm nothing. I'm gonna. So this is gonna be one, three, seven, minor seven. One, three, minor seven. One, three, minor seven. One, three, minor seven. 
And then I could do this arpeggiate with five above it. So the five is above it now. So now I'm like, there's the five. So now it's like one, five, minor, minor seven. Interessante. I've got a five up here. So I could be like, I could do. should go one three five five minor seven all right anyways let's go to the next one down here we have way up at the 11 again which is quite a distance not too well that's my normal distance actually so then if I played just like if this was the F up top, I would be able to play like this and then reach way up here. That would be my shuffle pattern. I can do that down here because there's, because once again, there's no kink in the tuning between these two strings, it's between these two. So my distance is the same for that shuffle pattern. This is the top part of my three pillars shape. And then this one is reaching just beyond that shape to grab the seven. So I can do this shuffle pattern. Is cool. All right, moving on. Let's do the last string down here. Let's go to an A. So let's go to this bottom string. I'm actually going to get to the bottom because we did a two day process on this one because the seven, I think I'm going to have to do the two day process all the time. All right, so now I'm going to say, now we're down here. And if I go up, let's go to the same string first this time. So if I go to the same string to the right of it, we've got here. So that if I go from here to here, two note away, whoops, two note away, uh, major second, therefore from here to here is a ten note away minor seven. I could arpeggiate it. I have a fifth right above it. So now I've got the one, five, seven, one, five, seven, one, five, seven, one, five, seven. Okay. And then I have a third up here. That's not gonna work. So let's keep it at that. Let's go to the one above it. Let's go to this one. So now I need a two note distance between these two. There's no kink in the tuning. This is the normal distance. So it would be five or negative five, four, three, two. So from this A to this G. So if I went from top to bottom, it would be a two note away major second. Bottom of top would be a 10 note away minor seven. And then I've got my five, which is right here. So I could arpeggiate with that one, but let's try to do a chord. So I've got the three is up here. So I could go. So this would be one, seven, three. And that's a shape that's useful. also have a I already did this shape right oh wait a sec <laughs> I need the seven that's why I didn't do that shape 
Dude. Dude, alright. I'm getting... My head is going. Get your head in the game. I don't want to get my head in the game. People hit it if you put your head in the game. That's why you have a helmet. Why do... The helmet's supposed to protect my head, not make it so I use it as a bludgeon for crying out. That's... Is that... I've get your head in the game. I will Okay. Let's see. This is gonna be five, ten, nine, eight, seven. Let me do that again. From here to here, this would be no, this would be five, ten, and then or negative ten or whatever, and then 15, 15 minus 12 would be 5 minus 2, which is 3, and then 2, 1, that, br I can, that brings me back to 0, and then 1, 2, so that's, two, so that's the 2 note away if I go way over here, but that's probably too far off, can't really do that too easy, so I'll just recognize that, I see you there, I, I've recognized you, so, but I'm not going to go out there. So here's negative 10, 5, negative 10, 15, 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, which is 3, and then over here is 2. So then I have this A and this G. That would be a uh, two note away major second, bottom to top, would be a 10 note away minor 7. So then if I go here, here, well, I go here, here, here's a third, and I can do that and just mute this other one. That's cool. I don't do that much. I don't do that. I should be. Well, you should be doing that. Could I get the, th the five in there at the same time? The five... I can just bar that off. Duh! That's so easy to do. So I just bar this off and be like, why don't I do that more? Yeah, I gotta work that into my sessions. Uh, okay. I have a three back here. So I could go. That's, a, that's too far back. That's too far. That's not going to work. That doesn't work for me. All right, let's go up another one. So if I count that up, it'd be five, 10, 15, bringing it down. 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which is three. And then three plus another five, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. So I could go from here up to the 10, which is right there. And then what else could I grab on the way? That's pretty far, but almost doable. I have an E down here. I have this, that's not gonna work. I've got like, could I grab like this? No, no, that's pretty not, not totally useful. Let's go up here and end it. I'm tired. Getting tired of your lip. What's wrong with my lip? I've... <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say if I go here I have a third underneath right here. Wait a second, I'm on the wrong. I could grab, could I grab this too? Interesting shape. So now I've got the seven 
three, mute, mute, five, one. That's interesting. <laughs> All right, I gotta stop it there. I'm tired. Let's just shuffle pattern, key of A, mixolydian.